Hi guys, Olive here, here today with 10 great summer book recommendations. It is officially summer here in the Northern Hemisphere, which means that I am thinking about all things summery and I am busy planning out all the reading I want to do this summer. And I figured if you are currently doing the same and you're looking for books that are fun and that perfectly fit the summer season, that maybe I could give you some ideas. So like I said, I have 10 books that I want to tell you about in today's video, six fiction books and four nonfiction books. And all 10 of these are light yet compelling reads that I could totally see being thrown into a beach bag. And while I know a lot of people really like thrillers, page turners during the summertime, I decided to keep this particular list low on anxiety and high on the chill out factor, just so you know what to expect from this list. So in no particular order, here are 10 great books that I recommend for your summer reading consideration. First on my list is The Narrow Boat Summer by Anne Youngson. This is a novel about two women, two strangers, who have both just very recently walked away from established lives. One woman has just left her career, the other one has just left her husband, and they meet at the exact same time that they meet a third woman who lives aboard a narrow boat. These two find out that the woman aboard the narrow boat needs medical attention, but she's putting it off because she needs to take her boat up the canals in order to be serviced. And even though these three just met, they decide they're going to swap places. So the narrowboat woman is going to take over one of their apartments and seek the medical attention that she needs, while these two women are going to live aboard the narrowboat in her place and take it up the canals in order for it to receive the service that it requires. And the rest of this book is about those two women and their journey up the canals and and all the people they meet along the way. For anyone who has read and loved The Enchanted April by Elizabeth Von Arnim, like I definitely did, I kind of see the narrowboat summer as the summer equivalent to that springtime book. I mean, April is literally in the title of The Enchanted April. But I think they have some similarities because both of them are about women feeling stuck in their lives and making huge life changes in order to find out what truly matters to them, what they want to be doing with their lives. I think this is such a calming, comforting, centering book. And bonus points if you read it aboard a boat. <laughs> My next recommendation is a memoir called Out East by John Glenn, in which the author recounts a summer that he and his friends rented and shared a house in the Hamptons. And while that may sound very shallow, I promise you this is not a book full of just partying and rich kids. There's a lot of depth in here too. The author was going through grief during the summer. He had just lost someone very important to him. And he was also going through an entire process of self-discovery. You also get to meet his housemates and learn what's going on with them. And you can feel his friendships getting closer with some people. It's a really interesting book. Plus, his writing is equal parts profound and hilarious. There are still lines I remember from this book. This is just like the perfect beach read of a memoir. Next up is one that I have read fairly recently. It's called One Italian Summer by Rebecca Searle. And this one also touches on the topic of grief, but in a very light, accessible way, just like Out East does. This book is about a young woman who has just lost her mother. The two of them were extremely close, so she's taking it very hard. But she decides in order to honor her mother, she's still going to go on the vacation that they were planning on taking together. They were planning this vacation before her mother died. And this young woman intends to spend her time in Italy relaxing, and also taking some time to consider whether or not she really wants to stay in the marriage that she's in. Well, while she's on this vacation, she meets someone very unexpected. And not only does it change everything about this vacation, it also kind of changes everything about her life. Reading this book feels like sipping a glass of your favorite wine while taking in a gorgeous vista. 
This book is relaxing. It is touching. It has a profound message, but it is so easy to sink into. I think it makes for the perfect vacation book, in my humble opinion. So I can't recommend this one highly enough, but I do have to say, don't be drawn in by the audiobook, even if it is narrated by Lauren Graham of Gilmore Girls. I love her. I'm a huge Gilmore Girls fan, but I don't think she did the best job with this audiobook. So I would personally recommend that you stick to the physical copy or the ebook instead. But now back to nonfiction, especially for all of you out there who enjoy a good swim during the summertime. May I suggest Splash? 10,000 Years of Swimming by Howard Means. This is a micro history that zooms in on the long history that humans have with swimming. Not at all surprising, considering we're a very adventurous species living on a water heavy planet. In this book, the author discusses the ancient world all the way up through the present day. And this being a micro history, each chapter is its own topic. It's kind of like its own essay. And so this book is really easy to dip in and out of. <laughs> in that way, I think this book makes a really good beach or even poolside book, especially if you're like me and you like to match your reading to whatever you're doing and experiencing at the time. But since we're on the topic of swimming, the next book on this summer recommendations list would actually pair nicely with that last book. It's a novel called Florence Adler Swims Forever by Rachel Beanland. This is historical fiction set in Atlantic City, New Jersey in the summer of 1934. A college-age young woman comes home for the summer and is training to swim across the English Channel. That is her dream she's trying to achieve. But then a tragedy strikes her family. And the rest of this book shows her family processing that tragedy and also just trying to understand what happened. This book is rather unusual, but in a good way. To put it bluntly, the twist happens right at the start of this book, which is a very gutsy move by this author. I always compare this book to a comedian starting their set with their best joke just to screw themselves over and make the rest of their set rise to the occasion. And that's definitely what happens in this book. It is masterfully crafted. And even though it can definitely be sad, it is also remarkably comforting. It's kind of like the beating of the ocean waves, serene yet melancholy. But let's lift the mood a little, shall we? The next book on my list is one that I've been recommending for what feels like forever. It's Cinnamon and Gunpowder by Eli Brown. This is a swashbuckling adventure tale about a chef who gets kidnapped by a lady pirate and is forced, under threat of death, to cook her a fancy Sunday dinner every single week using the very limited resources on the ship. This book is just so much fun. It's a pirate book. It's a foodie book. But then there are also some deeper elements to it as well. If you are just looking to have a good time with your summer reading, pick this one up. I truly doubt you'll be disappointed. But another book with some powerful female energy is my next recommendation on this list. It's called Women on Waves by Jim Kempton. And this is a history of women surfers, beginning with Hawaiian royalty in the 17th century, working its way up to modern sensations within the sports. And this author places a special emphasis on surfing within pop culture. Like the book on swimming I discussed earlier, Splash, this is another book that could very easily be read piecemeal. And that's actually how I would recommend you read this book. It's not driven by a narrative. It more tells little stories. So you can pick this book up, read one or two or however many you want, and then very easily put it down if something else is demanding your attention and you won't be breaking your flow of reading. I don't know if that style will necessarily be for everyone, but if this topic is interesting to you, or if you're looking for a book to pair with your next rewatch of Blue Crush, there is so much cool information in here. I actually reviewed this one for the Christian Science Monitor. I will link that review for you in the description box below in case you'd like to give it a read. But now back to fiction, I highly recommend Rock the Boat by Beck Dory Stein. This book is about three thirty somethings in a small beach town in New Jersey, reunited for the first time since high school. 
All three of them are trying to get their lives back on track, which involves a lot of second guessing what they originally wanted for their lives and giving themselves the grace to want something different. This book has elements of Legally Blonde and Gilmore Girls, but then again, it's entirely its own thing. And it has these perfectly imperfect characters who are just a blast to spend time with. This book is so sweet, but with its core message, it's really substantial too. Now, the last nonfiction summer recommendation I have for you is one for all you nature lovers out there. It's called Summer World, A Season of Bounty by Bernd Heinrich. And this is a book about how creatures in the natural world take advantage of the season with the longest days, how their bodies and behaviors change in response to now abundant food resources, and how they make the most of each and every day during the summer in order to prepare for the winter they know is coming. It is just so easy to sink into this book and marvel at how incredible nature is. This book has actually recharacterized how I see the summer. I now watch the creatures around my house a lot more closely and I truly can appreciate how resourceful they are. If you spend your summers outdoors in the company of such creatures, I think this one may interest you. And then finally, I saved this next book for last, not necessarily because I think it's the best book on this list, but because it takes place over Labor Day weekend. And in case you don't know what Labor Day is, it is a holiday here in the United States of America that always happens right at the beginning of September. And it kind of serves as the unofficial ending of summer for us anyway. But the book is called Sons and Daughters of Ease and Plenty by Ramona Acebel. And it is set over Labor Day weekend in Martha's Vineyard in 1976. A wealthy couple with three young children learns that all their money has dried up. And both of the parents decide to run off, but they both think that their spouse is back with the children. But the children have actually been left completely on their own, and they have to fend for themselves. Just in terms of plot setup, this is very much the literary fiction equivalent of the TV show Schitt's Creek. But what I remember most about reading this book is how much it felt like Labor Day weekend. It's got this leisurely vibe to it, but it is also very distinctly the end of something. In this family's case, it's the end of their comfortable way of life. And those types of endings, whether they be of a specific way of life or of the summer, can be both sad and freeing at the same time. I myself read this book over Labor Day weekend a number of years ago, and I can tell you it was the perfect book to fit that time of year. So when that time of year rolls around again this year, you want a book to fit the mood, you want a book to close out the summer season with, this might be the one. So that's it. Those are 10 books that I recommend for your summer reading list. If you found any of these to be TBR worthy, or if you have any of your own recommendations for me or for anybody else watching this video, I would love to hear from you in the comment section below. All of the books that I discussed today will be linked in the description box below for your click and convenience. And the other links I promised you will be there as well. And at the bottom of that exact same description box will be links to everywhere you can find me across the internet, like Goodreads and Instagram, the two places where I'm the most active, in case you would like to keep up with what I am reading and writing about right now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.